Hi everybody, this is Bob again. Very cold, very cold uh, winter evening here. December 19th, 2020, and it's about 8.30 in the evening. Very cold outside. I just came in from looking outside. We don't have any snow here. Anyhow, I wanted to uh, show a little bit about using the AR3 receiver in conjunction with the QF1 Q multiplier. I have a good friend uh, in Henry, Illinois, name of Val Johnson, and Val had heard that I was working on this AR3 and the AT1 transmitter, and Val sent me a QF1, and I thank you, Val. That was really nice of you. Uh, let's see what I have here. I'm planning on using the uh, AR3 receiver, the uh, the T AT1 transmitter, which is the first transmitter that Heathkit produced in the 1950s, and the VF1 VFO uh, for straight key night, which is New Year's Eve. So, uh, I got this uh, QF1 Q multiplier that Val sent. I went through it. I cleaned the controls with control cleaner here and here. I cleaned the switch here. And I did the same on the bearings on the ends of the variable capacitor in this Q multiplier, QF1. I did not put anything on the plates of the capacitor. <laughs> I've done that before, and that will really mess you up because it's really hard to clean that capacitor up. You can hear how nice the CW is coming in. Now, if I operate on the internal speaker only with the AR3, I'll just describe it to you. It, uh, it howls, it motorboats, it does all kinds of things. The speaker in the AR3 is mounted on the chassis and what's about an inch away from it on the chassis is the BFO coil. So when you're operating CW and you're using the speaker inside the a AR3 radio, uh, you've got a vibration problem, you've got uh, noise, you've got motorboating, you've got howling. So I connected a little external speaker. I really like these little external speakers. like the CB guys use in their trucks. And the reason for that is they're built so solid and they handle power and they're made for voice communications which is great for CW too. So a separate speaker like that will solve a lot of the problems with the AR3 receiver. And uh, anyways uh, I, I've been fixing up the AR3 and the AT1 and what else I did here? I, I noticed that the AR, AR3 will do a decent job on single sideband signals too uh, using this setup and it really works good. The uh, QF1 does improve the selectivity of the AR3. You can even tune in at times different stations if they're close together. I got on here when they had a uh, SKCC sprint and I was able to separate stations not as good as as on my new ICOM radio but uh, I can I can copy the signals and I can get on the air with this in the AT1 which I think is a lot of fun using this old stuff I like to use this I like to use the uh, ARC5 and the BC348 and the World War II stuff too it's really neat that you can get on the air now I got two stations there That one guy got off. There he is. Now I've tuned in that one station. He says, yes, I spend, I think he's talking about his time. But you can hear
and there we're separating two stations. That one, of course, has got a higher pitch. And now I can go to the lower pitch. That one there. There's another guy. And we can tune him in. Now that is a too strong signal. I just turned down the RF gain. But I wanted to show you how nice this QF1 Q multiplier works. And there's what it sounds with it off. You get all those stations in there mixed together. It helps quite a bit. And I really like it. So I wanted to show you how that works. I wanted to show you what nice reception I get with a separate speaker. Now I'm going to turn that speaker off and I'm going to go to the speaker inside the radio. Louder, for sure. Because that's a 4 ohm speaker and that's an 8 ohm speaker. It's louder. And there's the kind of thing that's the kind of thing that you get and it doesn't have to be really loud to do it. Uh, it quite often it'll do it just when it's soft if it hits the right pitch and so uh, I don't like to use the speaker inside the radio. I get the best results however by using headphones. Uh, headphones are even better sounding to me than using the small speaker. So I wanted to show you these things about the AR3 receiver. And when you're using it on uh, CW, you want to tune to the center of the CW band with your, with your band spread control halfway at the 50% point. And then you can tune your signals in just like that. K3. And you can use the uh, AR3 receiver on sideband. So what you're doing with the uh, Q multiplier, it has a regenerative effect to it as well, which gives it a, a more stronger signal when you tune it in. But you're tuning across the 455 kilohertz IF frequency with the Q multiplier. And uh, so anyways, uh, uh, that's a piece of equipment that I recommend is the QF1 Q multiplier. Now when I got this Q multiplier, this plug here for the power was wired for a different radio, for an S38 uh, Halicrafters or something like that, or an S40. Uh, so uh, uh, the first thing I did was pull that cap off and make sure that it was wired correctly for the AR3, which it was not. And you get that information from the AR3 manual or from the QF1 book. I don't have the QF1 book. I have one coming. I bought it on eBay. So it's, it should arrive here pretty soon. And, uh, and what else? I'll show you the insides of the Q multiplier. There we are. It's just got one tube in it. 
got two coils you tune. Those coils were not tuned when I got this. I had to tune the coils too to get it to work. And it uses a 12AX7 tube. Now if you have a 12AU7 tube, they will work, but I found that uh, it didn't work quite as sharply and tune as good as a 12AX7 tube did, but a 12AU7 will work if you haven't got a 12AX7 or you want to get one of these back on the air, it doesn't work. Uh, something like that. So anyhow, I was really pleased with the results that I got. And uh, here's my AR3 and I've got this uh, uh, jumper jumper wires here with a SO239 so I can connect to a 50 ohm antenna just screw the coax on there it's an adapter that I made to do that with so that's the deal and then you have a single wire here that goes to the plate of the pentagrid converter tube which is a 6BE6 or the the uh, first IF transformer they're connected together and it's just a single wire piece of RG58 cable with a uh, phono plug on it and that's all you need to connect now when you connect that uh, you're adding the capacity of this wire which I think is about 25 picofarads per foot so that's about two feet long you're adding about 50 picofarads to that IF transformer the one winding that goes to the pentagrid converter tube which is right in where is it at here it's oh it's oh back it's back behind the uh, audio tube there uh, so I, I can't just point it out but anyways uh, when you add that cable you're adding 50 picofarads to that transformer winding so you have to realign your IF transformers in your AR3 when you add the QF1 I did that by using the uh, the uh, digital signal generator the wave tech here I tuned it to 455 kilohertz it's still on there and then I ran the level up pretty high I got it at uh, 0.1 volts uh, is what I used and injected that right into the antenna here and that's a little trick for aligning receivers because you can force the IF signal through the the front end of the receiver by increasing the level real high and then you can tune those IFs you don't have to get in there and, and uh, connect right to the IF system you can tune the IFs by forcing the signal through and then of course you got to have it out of the case because on the AR3 you've got two slugs on the bottom of these IF transformers and two slugs on the top of the IF transformers that you have to tune so you want to uh, have it out of the case of course and then I tuned the BFO and the BFO I tuned uh, I had that 455 kilohertz signal running through there and I flipped the uh, modulation off on the uh, WaveTech and uh, ran a CW 455 kilohertz through and then I was able to then zero beat the BFO right on that which got it tuned properly so I wanted to mention all those things so that you guys could see. And when you align one of these things, you may get a little confused uh, with the coils at the top. You got three rows of coils here. Uh, the, the, uh, the first row on the left is your B, B band, which is one and a half to four megahertz. The middle coils here are the C band. Let me think, no, excuse me, I have got that wrong. Let me start over again. The first row is the A band, which is broadcast. The second row is the B band, which is 1.5 to 4 megahertz. And then the third row on the right hand side of the coil mounting plate on the top is the uh, 4 to 11 megahertz. In the back, you've got the oscillator coils. In the middle, you've got three capacitors which are used for band spreading. That's to make the band that you're tuning wider or narrower to, so it'll match up with the marks on the dial. And usually that doesn't need much adjustment. If it's been adjusted right at one time, they should be okay. Now the front ones then are the RF coils for the RF input circuit. And that you just peak on a signal. And what I did with mine I peaked up the uh, the uh, 80 meter band here, the B band, at three and a half megahertz because I'm going to use it on CW. I don't 
listen to the things, other things in here. Might tune in two and a half megahertz WWV once in a while, but usually I just tune in three and a half megahertz CW. And then on the uh, four to eleven megahertz band, I just tuned mine in and peaked the RF coil in the front, which is the middle one here at the top, uh, on seven megahertz. And then the D band, which is 10 to 30 or 10 meters right in there I just set it on 30 and you you start with that band first you want to tune that D band first why because the capacitors for it are mounted on the tuning capacitor so anytime you tune those you're going to shift these others around so you want to do this one first so that when you tune these three the lower bands you're not going to mess anything up because you don't tune those capacitors on the variable capacitor itself. This one here. Right there. Okay, I guess that's it. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. And uh, I know I'm kind of hopping around and uh, not getting everything exactly right. But I hope I gave you some good information. I wanted to show the operation of the Q multiplier, how it connects, and how nicely it works. How the uh, speaker in the radio causes feedback and motorboating. So you're better off running a speaker or you'll do the best with a set of headphones plugged in the back. It's got a quarter inch jack in the back to do that. And what else? Another thing I noticed too is that when you switch over to CW right here, you will find that the RF gain control actually takes prominence over the AF gain control because you should be using the RF gain control when you're tuning in CW signals. So uh, that is done kind of automatically for you because when you switch to CW, uh, this will give you much more change in volume than this will. I set this about uh, halfway and just leave it and do all my volume changing with this one down here. And if you get feedback and it causes any howling or anything, it will if you get it really high. The RF gain, just turn it down some. So that's it, guys. It's a good old receiver. A lot of fun to play with. I've made about four contacts with it now. And I'm going to be making some more. So that's it. 73s and happy holidays to everybody.